<laughs> I know, exactly. This is what's good to so yeah, I wonder if Mariano is coming now, up then. All right. Well, good. So we ready to go? I'm ready yeah. to roll. Steve and I are ready to roll. All right. Well, let's see. So, um, okay. So just as a reminder of what we talked about um, on day one of this class is there are the top three complaints about real estate agents were what? Um, we don't answer phone calls. Don't answer calls. We don't. Uh, or don't return calls. Don't return yeah. calls, right. We don't listen. We don't listen. And they don't. And when they feel like we're wasting their time. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, good. So just kind of remember the whole the whole reason I started this whole thing with that. Welcome. Yeah. So the first is that we don't return calls. Second is that we don't listen. And the third is that we waste their time. Now, so the reason I bring that up is it is so important for you to remember, hey Jeremy. It, it's so important for you to remember that uh, that's the experience that they have, because what we are going to, to then do is, is everything that we're doing that we're talking about here is designed around trying to help overcome that experience that they have of us that we don't listen and that we waste their time. Okay. So just keep in mind that, that, and I'll keep coming back to that, even though I didn't write it back up here on the board. I'm going to keep coming back to, remember, they have the experience that we don't listen and we waste their time. Now, the reason they have the experience that we don't listen and we waste their time is because the way that you and I tend to communicate is we do it from a standpoint of we're more worried about us than we are the other person. And so we then take what, what they say. Now, and remember, I guess this I will draw on the guess is remember 10% of who you are is conscious, 90% of who you are is unconscious. Welcome. Sorry, I'm good. a couple minutes late. You're good. Is it now, if I'm, you know, I'm not early, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the way it works. <laughs> All right, so 10% um, of who you are is conscious, 90% is unconscious. They then are gonna tell to us what they want in terms of, and, and I'll kind of bring this up here again too, the features that they want. So they're gonna talk about the features, but the reason they do that is because that's how it would make sense. Meaning like, could you imagine somebody saying to you when you ask them, you know, what are you looking for in a home? And they said, well, I just want a property that's gonna make me feel good. Like if they said that, like how do you go search for that on the MLS? You can't go, we don't have an option on the MLS of makes you feel good. Yeah, this is going to make you feel good. So, so because of that, what happens though is, is remember, it's about the emotion. There's some type of an emotion is what they are looking to purchase based upon. And the only way they know how to explain it to you is up in this conscious level, which is then going to be the features. And, and remember it's not the feature that they want. Like I have to keep saying that over and over and over and over again to you. They're not buying the feature. It's not the feature that they're buying. It's the benefit that that feature provides. So they talk about features, but it's actually the benefit is what they are looking to purchase. So, so, yeah, and I was standing there like he was going to come in and then I know, started to open the door and then the, the, the guy in his office to cover his little window. Oh, oh. Taylor? Taylor, Taylor yeah. yeah. Is that who that was? Yeah. Oh, I wonder what he was doing. He's right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Taylor. What? I was like, are you coming in or not? Everything he said is a lot. <laughs> what are you doing? There he is. Cap. See? Whatever he says is cat. I go, I can't teach in class. <laughs> Open the door and there's all kinds of people out there. So, okay. So it's not the feature that they'll talk about the feature, but it's not the feature that they're wanting to get. It's actually the benefit that feature provides. And so the idea of this is when you hear people say buyers are liars, it's not true. What's happening is they're telling you a feature that would meet the benefit that they're looking for, or, or sometimes you'll hear me say it as a need, but they'll talk about the feature, 
but it's really because it fulfills the benefit of what they're looking for. And so the reason that you'll hear people say buyers are liars is because what happens is they show up saying they want this feature, but it's really the benefit that feature provides. And if they find a way to meet that benefit in a different feature, they're okay with that. So just keep in mind, it's all about the benefit that the feature is. So Brenda brought up yesterday or Tuesday about that when they bring up a feature, she usually will ask them, why? why? Why is it that you want that? And, and so now you'll see here in just a minute though, that we wanna be careful with going to the why too soon because if, and, and not necessarily is that true, but I'll show you what I mean, is the hard part is sometimes they don't know, I guess is really the way to say it. And the reason they don't know is because of this. And so as a reminder, again, the way that your brain stores information is in these discrete locations. No, oh, that's, that's this so is not true. working much better, is it? <laughs> I know, I'm like, it started to, and then it dipped all of a sudden. So I don't know what happened. All right, so the, it's the pictures, the decisions, and then the feelings. Now, so here's what happens is that they, if you ask them, why do you want that? A lot of times, and I guess, tell me if you ever had this as an answer, but a lot of times what will happen, if you ask the why too soon, they'll say things like, well, it, I mean, it would just be perfect. And, or it would be just what we want. Well, the reason they're saying it that way is because they have not yet had the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings come back together. And, and then Derek already gave me the answer, but we'll see how good the rest of them do. What happens when the pictures, decisions, and the feelings come together is a term that we call? Crystal light. Crystal light. Crystal light. Crystal light. I actually, that's good. I actually should bring and get some crystal light to, to bring in just the device for it. Yeah. So. Anyway, all right. So yeah, good. Crystal light. So crystallization is what we're looking for. So let me write it out. So crystallization. Now, crystallization is the reintegration of the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings all coming back together again. So when the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings all reintegrate is when crystallization occurs. Now, why is that so important? Then they'll know why they want the picture. Okay, good. They, they will know. But, but the, the next piece of it is it then empowers them to actually go out and buy, or if it's a seller to list their house with you. So go ahead. Crystallization is kind of a, a good way to think of it as a transfer of emotion. Okay, say so, more about that. So the emotion that they know they have that is living within the 90%, which then comes to the surface in the 10%, and then you're transferring it from that 10% and casting the vision. I feel like that is where crystallization happens. Good, yeah, I like that. that. Yes, yes, totally. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. Say that, Jerry. Like this man is, is, is in tune. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, he's good. So yeah, so what's going to happen then is, is, is they've got the pictures, the decisions, and the feelings all stored there. But again, when you first ask them, like, so tell me what you're looking for in a home, and they say, well, I don't know how to describe, or I don't know how to, um, yeah, describe it, but I'll know it when I see it. What they're really saying is it's here. I just don't know how to bring it back to the surface, this 10%, to be able to then explain to you what I, what, what it is that I'm looking for. Therefore, they, the best that they can do is to tell you about a feature that they think would satisfy. Now, so this leads to the next piece of this. And actually, let me say one other thing before we go to the next piece. So part of what this is, remember I said to you guys on Tuesday that we, we tend to communicate one thing, but we actually mean something else. So when we communicate one thing, but we mean something else, that's what I mean by this. Of They communicate the feature that they're looking for, but what they mean is the benefit that that feature is going to provide for them. Okay, so now here's, here's something that I have, have been saying to you guys is that 
The reason crystallization is so important for the person to do before, because it enables them to buy, because, because without it, they're left with still this kind of unsureness, okay? So now, if that's true, many of you guys have sold houses before and you, you didn't know the process that we're gonna go through. So if what I said is true, that nobody buys anything until they crystallize, how did the person crystallize in order to buy if you weren't able to take them through the process that I showed them? Maybe another agent worked with them or something like that, some other person? Okay, possibly, which it would tie back to what I said of that the uh, top three complaints, we don't return calls, we don't listen, we waste their time. Sometimes what happens is that, is they feel like the only way we're gonna fix the problem is we gotta go get a new agent, a new agent okay? Good, 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 but what about the ones that don't? Because I part of what I'm saying is, I'm not saying the only way ever you're ever gonna get anybody to buy is to get, is you have to take them through this process. They do have to crystallize. So then how do they crystallize if nobody's taken them through the process that, that we are working? They have to, do it themselves. Okay, it good. Takes longer, so we waste time. High five. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's what I want you guys to get out of this. Is without this process, the other option is they have to figure it out on their own. Now, how do they figure it out on their own? Though? Going through a lot of different agencies, only find one that. Okay, could be, could be doing the work we should be but, doing. But it's tied to what you were saying. So like when you said it takes a lot longer, what, what does that mean for us? That's right. So that term, the term for that of the other option is with, so you think of it this way. There's two options you have. One is that you have them do this term, which is called information loading. Information loading is what happens to you every time you're watching TV or a show, or you go onto YouTube and they put on a commercial, you have to watch a commercial, that's information loading. They're loading you with the information so that it's now time that I go to the grocery store and I think, oh, I need to buy some chips. What kind of chips am I gonna buy? So what's the first brand that comes to your mind? There's, there's one answer that comes up almost every time. If I'm going to the grocery store to buy chips, I'm gonna buy- The or Doritos. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's what? Yeah. 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 That is good. But... The, the number one answer that I get every time I ask Doritos. that is Doritos, yeah. especially if it's around Super Bowl time that I teach yeah. this <laughs> class. And I say, like, right after the Super Bowl, whenever I teach this class, and I go, okay, what Dorito, what, or not what Doritos, <laughs> what chips to come to your mind first? It's almost every time Doritos, oh, Doritos. Yeah. And so here's what that means. They've done the best job of information loading. So the same process happens with our buyers. The other, the way they're going to crystallize without us taking them through the process is look at a lot of houses. Now, if what you don't want to do is go show them a ton of houses before they're going to bounce. To some extent, I get that in the market that we're currently in, like it's not possible to show them a lot of houses because there's maybe two or three that meet their needs, right? But, but think of it as that that's what has to happen is they've got to crystallize. Now, let me say this another way, and then we're going to jump into the process. In terms of the crystallization, if you get them to write an offer and they haven't crystallized, guess what happens during due diligence? That's right. So part of what you need to know is when you get a client that you get them under contract and during due diligence, they all of a sudden are going, Ooh, I now you've heard this term as buyer's remorse. They're having buyer's remorse. All buyer's remorse is they haven't crystallized. That's all it is. All buyer's remorse is that we haven't crystallized and that we're taking this step that we're not sure it's going to fulfill the benefits or the needs that we have. All right. If you're with me, clear, say yes. 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 Okay. All right. So now let's go to this. So now let's, let me remind you where we were from on Tuesday on this. We started this whole thing by talking about and how I told you there are three tools. So tool number one is designed 
around getting them to share with you the pictures, what they kind of see of the property, right? And we're going to do that through what we call directives. Directives is going to be here, this tool number one, okay? Directives are described for me So you're typically gonna use things, you're gonna to say to them, describe for me your ideal home. So with the buyer of a house, now we will get into the seller later on, but um, with the buyer of a house, I'm gonna start the process actually with permission, which we talked a little bit about on Tuesday, but I'm gonna start with permission. And then I'm gonna say, describe for me your ideal home. Now, the other things you can do that are directives would be share with me, Tell me about, help me understand. Now, remember all of these, the whole point of all of this is designed around your, the, the way that our brain works is like a computer. Given an instruction, it is gonna respond according to it. That was the whole thing of, if you wanna know what was going on a mile down the road, you ask a giraffe or a turtle, right? The whole purpose of that was for me to show you that your brain works like a computer. When given a, a certain set, it's gonna respond in a certain way. Well, the same thing applies to this. If I say to you, describe for me your ideal home is a little bit different than, so are you looking for a, a single family residence or are you wanting, you know, or whatever? Like if I, do you want a condo or a house? Like if I, if you're gonna get a different response from them based on the way that our brains work by you saying, describe for me your ideal home. Now, so here's the point of that. So remember I said, we start with permission and, and I've, I've got printed and I'm gonna to give to you the scripts on this, but in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you some questions that, that may be feel personal. They may be things you haven't considered. Is that gonna be okay? By me starting with that and then saying, describe for me your ideal home, they should then start to describe it. Now, with that being said, though, sometimes what will happen is when you say describe for me your ideal home, sometimes what they're going to do is they're used to communicating at this level, not at this level. So their assumption is you want to know at this level. So a, a lot of times what will happen when you say describe for me your ideal home, they're going to give you the surface level, meaning three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage, like that. They're going to give it to you that way. So because of that, the other piece of tool number one here is, of the directives is prompters. Prompters are going to be, what else? Oops. Keep going. Say more. Okay, so, so here's what is gonna happen. So this is what I did with Trey the other day where we did this <laughs> passing the baton. And so what you're gonna say is describe for me your ideal home. They're gonna then start to describe it. Now, like I said, it's not gonna be uncommon for them initially to say three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage, which is all surface level. Once they do that and they then figuratively hand you the baton when they kind of, okay, it's your turn to talk now. What you're going to do is you're going to give them some positive feedback. So again, I'm just going to put it as PF, but PF is positive feedback. You're going to give them positive feedback, meaning while even he's talking or she's talking, the person's talking and they're describing the home and they're saying, well, I want to have, you know, three bedrooms, two baths, two, two car garage. I'm going to be, go, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, interesting. Huh? Yeah, sure. Mm. Oh, okay. Like I'm going to do that kind of stuff, which is all positive feedback. Once they're done talking, you want to then paraphrase back to them. Like don't repeat, like some people are very expressive as they describe it. So you're not going to then go back and explain every single thing they said, but you want to say enough back to them that they know you were listening. Okay. So that's part of this positive feedback. And then I'm going to say, what else? Or keep going. So you saw me do that with Trey when I was, hey, hey, you're doing a really good job. That's positive feedback. Hey, you're doing a really good job. Tell me more or keep going. 
and then you hand them back figuratively the baton. Okay, now it's your turn to talk. What should happen then is you're now then, when, as soon as you do that, you are forcing them to go down here. You're, by you saying, okay, what else? By, just by you saying what else forces them automatically to go, oh, and, and they don't say this, but what's going on inside their brain is like, oh, this person actually is really interested in knowing what I want in a home. So now all of a sudden they're going to start to access this part of the brain where the pictures and the decisions are. So specifically between these two, but, but more so here, they're going to now start to tell you, okay, well, we want to have a, a, an updated kitchen and we have a big backyard with a lot of grass. And they're going to start to tell you a bunch more features. Okay. Now, so I am going to keep doing this positive feedback. What else? Positive feedback. Keep going. Positive feedback. Say more. Until when? How do I know when to stop that? I don't have anything else to say. Yeah, good, good. That's right. And, and how am I going to know that? You remember what Trey said on they Tuesday? He's what? He told you. Yeah, he, they will typically say, well, I don't know what else to say. That, or they'll say, that's about it. Or they'll say, oh, I mean, I don't think you'll be able to find it. But that, that was, you know, they'll say something that's kind of like, I don't know what else to tell you. They may even say that. Okay. Now. The other thing that I introduced to you is keep in mind while all this is happening, and I've got the uh, more copies of the grid I'm going to give to you, and I emailed them. And as they're describing it, every feature that they talk about, you're going to just fill in what they say about it within this grid. So I always call that filling the grid. Okay. So I'm going to continue as they if they talk about the kitchen first, then this that will go in this box. And then anything they say about the kitchen, I'm going to write in there. They talk about the backyard. Uh, anything they say about the backyard, it's going to go there. They get to the garage. They don't say a whole lot. I just go to the next. They go to the basement. And they say a little bit about the basement. Then they talk about the um, family room. And they give me a bunch of information on the family room. Okay, so now, as soon as they say that's about it, so this is pretty much where we left off Tuesday, okay? As soon as they say that's about it, or I can't think of anything else, I don't know what else to tell you, I'm going to stop and look at my notes. Now, the other thing that's happening is because you're keeping notes while they're talking, because you're writing down all of this stuff, that also is interpreted as positive feedback, meaning they know you're listening because you're taking notes. So I'm going to be taking notes on it. And, and again, just to remind you, whatever is written on here only matters to you. It doesn't matter if anybody else can interpret it, knows what it says, but as long as you do, that's what matters, okay? So, so I'm going to keep that, keep all of those notes and things going right there. Now, in the event that what happens is I get this filled out, and, and remember I said to you, that on the garage, they didn't say a whole lot. And let's, I don't remember if this was the basement. Yeah, basement, they didn't say a whole lot. What I want to do, but. It only matters to you what yeah, that says. I know. <laughs> only you need to read it. No, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point. So um, here's what's going to happen, though, is once we get to this section, that part right here, I'm going to look at the grid to see, do I have a bunch of information written down about every one of the features? And if I do, then great. But if I don't, like for instance, the garage and the basement here, I only had a little bit of information, then what I would do is this. I'm going to say, okay, Trey, you mentioned the garage. So first I'm going to give some positive feedback. Hey, Trey, I got a really good picture of what you were talking about. But you mentioned the garage. Tell me more about the garage. So notice I'm jumping right back up to another directive. And this one, I'm going to be in a little bit more specific. So here's the key thing. Remember at the start of this whole thing, the start of the whole process, remember I told you, is it okay if we let them buy the house they want, not the one you think they should buy? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. 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 Did you say no? <laughs> no I said, oh, I don't see this. No, it's not all right. <laughs> So yes, it's okay if we let them buy the house that they want, not the one we think they should have. Well, part of that process then is 
I should be asking questions that are relevant to them, not things that are about me. So that first question of describe for me your ideal home, by me saying describe for me your ideal home is very neutral. Like I'm not projecting anything on them. In fact, can, so do you guys still have um, the ones that were here at least? What the questions, remember at the start of the class on Tuesday, I said, write down the questions you would ask of a buyer. I think you were even still here for that part, okay. Michelle. Oh, okay. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> no, I don't know, maybe you were. But okay, go so, read to me the questions. Like we're not going to answer them again, but but what I want to show you is something real quick. But I got to find a few of the right questions. So do you have them yeah. right now? So, okay, share well, with me why you guys are moving, okay. and then share with me one or two things you would change about your current home. One or two things you would change. Okay. Oh, you weren't here. Why have you started your home search now? Okay, and then what else? That was only one. Oh, that was the only one you had. Yeah. I was on Zoom. I got my. Okay. I mean, first one is ultimately what are your goals in real estate, and then what what are what are the things you look for at home? What are the things you cannot live without? So like a few features that you like, you know, some things. But what are things that like no goes? Yeah. And then where is that? Like where do you see that home being? Okay. Good. Do you remember what yours were, Trey? Yeah, mine was what are two to three things you want in your new house? Uh, location of the house and the price. Okay. So, did you were you here for that part? Do you remember? I wasn't. Okay. But just on the top what, of the yeah. What are the what are the two or three questions you typically ask of a buyer like, right off the bat? It, it, what it. have you looking for at home? And what are you looking for at home? Okay. Well, you... I wasn't here, but I usually. Uh, I know I wasn't expecting you to be here today. Either. Right. I, thought you were going I know to I'm leaving again too. <laughs> this is where you're going to the fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not the biggest problem. Right. Okay. Um, so what do I what do I ask? Like yeah, when you sit down with a buyer right off the bat, what's the first thing you would ask them to help you know what you're what they're looking for? Yeah. What are you looking for in home? What's what's you know got you looking now? You know things like that. Okay. Joan. I usually have my clients close their eyes and visualize what they want to have, like in the kitchen, whatever. Okay. Get them to. Okay, good. So, so here's part of what I want you guys to, to notice is this. Contained within every question you ever ask anyone. So forget real estate for a minute. Just when you ask anybody a question, every question we ever ask there is an assumption behind the question. And, and, and so for you guys that were here, remember I told you the story of my son walking in the house, slamming the door, he was mad at his friend. And, and then I said, my wife asked him questions that then led her to a conclusion of why he was mad at Tanner. Contained within the questions was an assumption. And typically when we ask people a question, there is an assumption behind, we have some type of an assumption in us that leads us to ask the question. You follow me? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we ask the question, therefore, what I'm saying is this ties back to the idea of, is it okay if we let them buy the house they want, not the one we think they should get? Typically the questions we ask are more about us because they're based on our assumption than they are about the person. And so that's part of why we have to start this whole thing with describe for me your ideal home. So what would be the assumption behind the, the statement or the, the question here of describe for me your ideal home? That well, they're looking for a house. Okay, good. That they're looking for a house. What else would be my assumption in that question? That they want an ideal house. <laughs> or that they know what it is. Good. So my assumption is that they know what that is. By me saying describe for me your ideal home, I'm assuming, number one, that they're looking to buy a house, but number two, that they know what that is. So keep in mind, when, whenever we are talking, especially in this scenario, now remember, what are we trying to create? Visualization. <laughs> That's okay. You weren't here. So create no, money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the correct answer is what? Crystallization. Okay, so crystallization is what we're trying to do. Is now, if I'm trying to get them to crystallize, I have to make the whole process about them. I can't make it about me. If it's about me, they're not going to crystallize. But if it's about them, they'll crystallize. So I start with this very neutral 
Describe for me your ideal home, or as neutral as we can be. Describe for me your ideal home. They now do that, okay? So I've written it down. Then I get to the end of that they, where they say, that's about it, or I don't know what else to tell you. I'm going to then say, you've done a really good job, but Trey, I noticed you mentioned the garage. Tell me more about the garage. So now notice what I've done is I've gone from kind of this big, tell me anything, to now I'm saying, okay, he didn't give me a whole lot of information about the garage. Now, here's the other side of it. It's possible that the reason he didn't tell me anything much about the garage is because it's not that important. It's possible. The other thing, though, could be that he just got describing other things. And here's the other thing. The way that you and I have, have been trained. So, in fact, actually, Michelle, you like to brought your son. What's his name? What's your name? Roman. Roman. All right. Has your mom ever told you, don't talk so much? She hasn't? Okay, good. Well, that's good. But usually, that's what's happened, is as a kid, we, blah, 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 and, and our parents, like, don't talk so much. So because of that, what happens is, in this scenario, when you say to somebody, describe for me your ideal home, so you pass. You're a good mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but what happens, though, is they start to talk, 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 talk. And, and something inside of them is like, oh, I'm probably giving too much information. They probably don't want this much detail. Now, part of why we're saying, hey, you're doing a good job. Hey, I really appreciate everything you're telling me. Tell me more. Like the reason we're doing that is to encourage them to keep going, letting them know it's okay to keep talking. Now, what I'm, once I get to here, though, so it's possible that he didn't tell me a whole lot about the garage because... He just went on to something else or whatever. So I want to give him the opportunity to do that. Now, why? Why would I want to do that? So you have a clearer picture of what you want. Okay, good. That's part of it for sure. But there's a bigger reason. What's the benefit of why they want what they want? The garage, I guess. So yes and no. The, the only reason I say yes and no on this is I don't know. Now, remember I said they buy in twos and threes. The, the property has to have two or three of the benefits. But at this point, so the only reason I say yes and no is if that's one of their two or three, then yes. If it's not one of their two or three, then no. So it's yes and no on that. Um, I lost a deal because the husband, he never said he wanted a deep garage. But when we got everything done, we got the house, you know, that they were buying under contract and everything. He finally measured and his truck would fit. So the deal was done. Mm -hmm. And the, and his wife was devastated because everything else checked the box. But because of that, um, no go. So yeah, perfect example. See, there are two or three that, that are going to be important, which I can totally relate to that. Now, here's the, here, let me kind of just speak to that because I totally get it. But I want you to see the other side of this a little bit too, is... If that is not one of the two or three top two or three benefits of the house, that he would have still bought. It. So let me give you an example of that. For me, currently, like right now, for me, if I were to go buy a new house, I want a four car garage. I have a three car garage, but I'm like, there's still not enough space. I need a four car garage. Yet, Ford is coming out with the F-150 Lightning that's all electric. And I'm like, I am buying that truck. But I already know just exactly what you're saying. I already know it is not going to fit in my garage. Yeah. I already know it's not. But you know what? My wife is like, what? I can't believe that you're even interested in buying it when you know it's not going to fit in our garage. And I was like, I don't care. Like, I, but yeah. here's why. Even though I've told you guys, like, a garage is important to me, garage is important to me. The, it's not one of my top two or three benefits of the house though. As important as it is to me, just to have it, 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 it's not one of my top two or three benefits of the house though. And so because of that, I'm, it would be okay. So here's what I'm saying. Part of what I want you to understand is this. In the beginning of this, during this phase of it, phase one, while they're describing to you their ideal home, everything's important everything's important but as we get into this further which we're about to do what you'll see is 
it goes from everything's important to there's two or three things that are important and they'll adjust on the other things. But the two or three, no way, not going to move. So for him. Yeah, he was going to sacrifice um, RV parking, um, you know, no basement. It's a one level home, um, everything else. But it's that garage. And no matter what his wife said, yep. he wouldn't do it. Because one of his top two or three needs, benefits that he was looking for was not being met. Therefore, yeah. therefore, I'm not buying it. And he, and he, but you're right. That wasn't one of his top two or three. It was just like, oh crap, it's a garage, you know? Yeah. Okay. So now, so the question that I asked, so, so why do, why do I need to get more information about the garage when at this point, I don't even know if it's one of his top two or three. Why do I still need the more information? This, this is a trick question. To Maybe see if I could get you to say the word. Crystallize? Yes. <laughs> the reason I, now here's why. is I, The reason is because the way that they're going to crystallize, so I'm going to keep coming back to this until, until, we, until I get you guys to fully get it. Until is, we crystallize. Yeah, until you crystallize, <laughs> exactly. Is I'm going to keep coming back to this is the way that you're going to get them to crystallize is they first have to tell you the story, so to speak. You got to get them to start telling you the pictures that they have. Then from there, tool number two that we're going to go to right here in just a minute is all about the decisions they've made about it. So everything that this whole process is designed around getting them to crystallize, because once they crystallize, they're empowered to buy. All right. So now, next. So once we have filled the grid, so I want to make sure I'm really clear on this. I'm going to stick with this. So I, I would have said, so Trey, you mentioned the garage. Tell me more about the garage. And then he would have said, blah, blah, blah. And I would have said, hey, that's great. What else? Until he says, that's about it on the garage. Then I would have said, okay, the other thing you mentioned was the basement. Tell me more about the basement. Now, now keep in mind, if he's already told me a lot about it, I don't need to do this. I'm only doing it on the features that he didn't give me a lot of detail. And, and I'm just at this point trying to get as much as I can. In fact, here's another way to think about this. And I probably should have brought in another cup with some water. But if I took, I've got water in here. If I poured more water in here, could I get, could I get the water to go actually above the rim? Yes. yes. So I can. I, you know, I could get it to where it actually is kind of like this, right? Now, do you know what that's called? What creates that water thing? Tension. Surface tension. <laughs> it's surface tension. That's okay. That's okay. But what happened once I build up that surface tension to where the water's actually up over the rim? What happens when I put the next drop in? Does one drop come over the side? No. No, all of a sudden the whole thing. That's what we're trying to create with our client. Is we're trying to fill this, fill this up so much the grid, we're trying to get so much information that we are creating this surface tension, so to speak, that then we're going to add one more drop in, which is going to be tool number three, that when we add one drop in, all of a sudden it overflows. What does number three say? I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> feelings. What feelings? Oh, yes. Okay. It's just feelings because of crap. Yeah, I know. Which actually, here's it the thing. Will. Do not be surprised, actually. If when they do crystallize, now remember I, at the start of the class or when we got to crystallization, I said to you, every aha moment you have is crystallization, mm -hmm. but not every time you crystallize isn't an aha moment. If it is an aha moment for them, it, I have had people, when I got to the feelings part of it and asked them, they did cry. Oh, wow. So I didn't intentionally do that, but, <laughs> but, but it is not, un so here's what I would say. It's not common that someone's going to cry in this process when you they crystallize, but know also if you do, if it does happen that they get teared up or emotional, number one, know you did a really good job. Like that's the first thing is you can know I killed it on getting them to crystallize, but just don't be surprised and just be prepared to, Hey, it's okay. And yeah, no, this, it's because we're talking about some pretty emotional stuff. Remember our, 
the permission that I told you, in order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you some questions that may feel personal, maybe things you haven't considered. That's the whole idea of why we say that to them is because it is possible that they will cry in the process. It's, it's not common, but it's, I would also say it's not uncommon. Like you'll have it happen if you're doing this right. You will have that take place. Okay. All right. So now that the grid's full, so Trey's filled up the grid, or I filled it by asking the questions, the directives, prompters, positive feedback. The next thing that I'm going to do now is we're going to go over here to tool number two. So tool number two is, is going to be modifiers. This exciting stuff, Roman? No, I don't. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for this being here. I know. But is it a good treat? That's not even good either. <laughs> Your mom didn't bring any good treats. Yeah. All right. Hey, who chose the treats? We got a different bouncer in that title room. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, before I go to modifiers, though, and I'll show you what modifiers are first. Well, yeah, let me do that first. Modifiers are going to be who, what, when, where, and how. How old are you, Roman? Six. Six. Look like you're like 16. <laughs> are you going to be a realtor one day? Heck no. <laughs> not after this class. Huh? You were thinking about it, but not now. What are you going to be when you grow up? A pilot, yeah. uh, astronaut, fireman, policeman, what is it? What do you want to ditch digger. Um, you don't, know. don't know yet. All right. Well, your mom. You <laughs> That's all. That <laughs> <matters. My mom's laughs> <an agent. laughs> what do you say? I said my mom was an agent, and I told her I'd never be an agent after doing all the mailers for her and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. And, like, now you're an agent. <laughs> and his grandma's an agent too. Yeah, and my great aunt. Yeah, yeah. and a few other. All right. So modifiers. <laughs> The modifiers are designed around the decisions, the who, what, when, where, how. Now notice there's one left off here. Why? Yeah. So and it's the reason for that is because the why is going to be tied to this. So at this point, I don't want to ask yet. So why do you want that feature? I first need to find out the decisions they've made about it. Who's going to use it? What's it going to be like? When do you use it? Where's it at? How do you use it? All those kinds of things. Or how's it decorated? How's it laid out? Any of those things. Does that make sense? Now, before we do that, though, I'm first going to have them rank those items. Now, let me show you what that looks like. So I first filled the grid. And remember, I spent all this time getting all this information, getting as much information as I could get. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, so Trey, you've done a really good job. I got a good picture of your house. Of everything we've talked about, now, now watch how I do this, and, I'll, and then I'll explain to you why I do it the way I do it. Of everything we've talked about, what are the two or the three things that are most important? So make it up. Uh, kitchen and the garage. Okay. So when he says that, I'm going to say kitchen. I'm going to circle kitchen, and I'm going to circle garage. Okay. Now, now that I've done that, now, now here's, the, I'm assuming you're making this up, but Notice that I only had one little thing about the garage. So if I hadn't gone back and done like a second pass to get more information on it, I would have had to now go get more information. So it's just better to do it all in the beginning. Okay. So now I've said, okay, of those, so of everything we talked about, what are the two or three most important? He said kitchen and garage. Great. Which one is number one? The kitchen. The kitchen. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to put a one here, which by default, that means that one's number two, right? Now, notice, remember I talked about the, 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 the way that we're approaching this is well, I'm making it about them, not me. What would have happened? Well, in fact, actually, let's rewind because sometimes we want to take a shortcut on the process of this and, and just say this. So, hey, um, Trey, which of everything we've talked about, which is most, well, what one's most important? Kitchen. And then which one would be second most important? Garage. And then which one would be third most important? The lot, the backyard. The backyard. Okay. Now, how many did I just get? Three. And why did I get three? 
you are a very that's right is because i created him to give me three but what if that third one really isn't important but now you're going to look the problem now all of a sudden i've created a challenge in this process so the reason i started i so i always start this going to to tool number two modifiers by saying of everything we've talked about, what are the two or the three? Because by, by me saying to him, what are the two or three? What, what's, what's kind of the message I'm trying to give him? These are the top things, everything else doesn't matter. Yeah, give me the thing. That, yeah, thank you. What are the things that really matter is really kind of what I'm saying, okay? And then once he tells me two or three, and the reason I say, you know, what are the two or the three is because people buy in twos and threes. So I'm, I'm saying, give me the two or three. What if there's four of those? What if you, what, it, it, this is possible that somebody has four benefits that has to be met. Now, not norm, that is not the norm, but that occasionally you'll get somebody that has four. Then so when you find a house, then that's the one. Well, but he, well, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but, but even before that, if I said to him though, what are the two or three that are most important? What if there's four that are important to him? What's he gonna do? He'll go off for that suggestion. That's right. If, so let's assume there's four, just make them up. And I said, Trey, of everything we've talked about, what are the two or the, and it doesn't even have to be anything written there, just say something else. Yeah. Of, of, the two, of everything we've talked about, what are the two or the three that are most important? Uh, the kitchen, garage, backyard, and master bathroom. Okay, so if he did that, then I now know there's four. And I would have just circled all four of them. Then I would have said, okay, which one's number one? And then which one's number two? Garage. Which one's number three? Bathroom. By default, then the the math, the whatever was number four. Does that make sense? So I'm trying, it, I, this whole process needs to be about them, not me. And so by me saying it as, hey, give me the two or three, I'm kind of in a subtle way making them say, okay, I talked about some of this stuff, but it's really not that important. Does that make sense? Okay. So now that I've gotten the two or the three, the next step is I'm going to do modifiers on only those two or three. So everything else now goes out the door. Like I'm not really gonna worry about it unless he brings it up again. I'm never gonna, any of the things that, that I had written down here that then is not part of the two or three, like I might tuck it away at least kind of to remember some of that, but really it doesn't matter. What matters is the two or the three, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this. So think of it this way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this kitchen box here. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to start here with a directive. So I'm going to start back with a directive here. One, I'm going to use one directive. Then I'm going to come over here to the modifiers. And on the modifiers, what's going to happen is I'm going to have him give, I'm going to start. I'm going to ask to him questions that, that start with who, what, when, where, how. And you need to ask somewhere between five and seven questions about the kitchen that start with this. Now, here's the truth. There is not a set number. Like I'm telling you five to seven, but here's the truth. There are times I may ask 12 or 15 questions. There are other times I might ask three. The reason I'm telling you five to seven is because what I have found is agents just typically, as a general rule, don't ask enough. We don't ask enough questions here to get them crystallizing to where they're going to crystallize. Okay. So, so this is what it would look like. And again, you can make it up, but I'm going to say, so Trey, um, what are the two or three? He gives me them. Which one's number one? Which one's number, well, by default, the one's number two. So then I'm going to go, okay, Trey, let's talk about the kitchen. So here's what I want you to do is picture yourself in the kitchen. So now notice the notice how this directive works. I'm saying I'm in giving an instruction to his brain. Picture yourself in the kitchen. What I'm doing is telling his brain, go to where your pictures of the kitchen are stored in your brain. Tell me what you see. Okay, so I'm just that's where I'm starting. This is the first directive. Oh, what's that? let me say one other thing, actually. On this five to seven, it can be a combination of directives or modifiers. So you can bounce back and forth on this five to seven. 
I always start with picture yourself in the kitchen or picture yourself in the backyard, picture yourself in the basement, picture yourself in the garage, wherever, whatever the feature is, picture yourself there. Tell me what you see. So now just now, actually, as he does says some stuff, here's what I want you guys to do. As he talks, listen to what he's saying and think of what questions could you ask as follow-up questions to him that would start with who, what, when, where, how, okay? Because ideally, the questions that we're then going to ask these modifiers should ideally have to do with what he's going to tell us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so picture yourself in the kitchen. Tell me what you see. Open floor plan so that it's not really crowded and more newly renovated, so it's not older. Okay. Now, now keep in mind, we would have already up here done the what else, keep going, tell me more. So he may have already given me a bunch of information, but depending on what he said here, because we're not, <laughs> this is not real, I'm going to jump in and do some of this. Okay. So, hey, that's awesome. What else? Uh, maybe a pretty big pantry, like a walk-in pantry. That'd be nice. Uh, okay, I'm going to write one thing down. Keep going. Lots of windows. Which I wish you could see his face right now because what is going on in his brain is is he's accessing in his brain where the, all of this information is stored, which is what you want to have happen. Even though to some extent he he initially was maybe making it up, all of a sudden now he's like really thinking, "What would I want?" Okay, keep going. Kitchen right next to the dining room, so it's just kind of all together. But honestly, if it's updated, that's pretty much it. Okay, good. Okay, so good. Now, what questions would you guys want to ask him that are who, what, when, where, how, based on what he said? Uh, I mean, I'd be like, well, I know you it sounds like you want a lot of space, you know, with the, with the kitchen updated. Well, who who would be there with you? Okay, good. So th that would be a great question. So who's going to be using the kitchen? Uh, and just, you can make it up. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Myself and my son. Okay. So you and your son. Okay, good. What other questions would you ask based on what he said? I'll come back to these in a minute. But what other questions would you ask based on what he said? I would ask maybe like what colors kind of okay. would good. you like? Or like um, what style do you like? Modern. Okay, good. Yeah. What's up? Uh, no, uh, so, sorry, I want to stop real quick because you started to do something. I answered the question. That's what I was going to say. You want to be really, really careful not to then, after you say what style, not to say, because what were you going to say? Modern? Yeah. Or were you going to give them another option or no? Right. No, yeah. no, you were or what? Well, I just started and then. And then you realized I, I should. Would <laughs> yeah, so what would have you said? Um, like farmhouse. Okay. Yeah. So what we want to do is we, again, keeping this as neutral, because if you say modern or farmhouse, guess what they're probably going to choose? Yeah. One or the, one other. the other. Yeah. So, so we want to just stay as neutral as we can of what style? So what would the style? Modern style with black and white. Colors. Okay, cool. Good. What other questions would come up from that, from what he said? Now, there are other, like I said, you don't, you can ask other things. Like, for example, one of the ones I would ask is where, where are things going to be located? Like, what's the layout of the, of it? like, that would be a great question because you're asking them, what are the, like, just think of it as I'm trying to get to what are the decisions they've made about this feature? Okay. I was kind of going to say with where, like, location, layout of the kitchen. Okay, good. Yeah, that would be another great question you could ask is, so where in relation to the rest of the house would it be? How will those, how will those features benefit you? Not yet, Not because yet. if when you ask that, that's your, you're getting to tool number three. If you're asking how that's going to help you, that's where we're trying to get to the benefit. And we haven't asked enough modifiers yet to do that. So you're good thinking, just a little premature. 
Um, I would probably ask what type of appliance it was from gas, electric. Okay, good. Don't give the option though. Just even there's though what type of appliance? Even though there's really only probably two options, like I don't think there's solar like stoves yet or anything, right? But but so just yeah, what kind what type of appliances? Gas oven. Okay, so that's the great question. So what we're gonna just do is, so who's gonna use it? What, what are you gonna use it for? How often do you cook? What kinds of things do you cook? Like that's the kind of stuff. Now, so now let me come back to this. He said a pretty big pantry. So now the, here's where I really wanna make sure you guys understand this. If he says, I want a pretty big pantry. So, I want every one of you right now to think about for yourself, what does that mean? When he said he wants a pretty big pantry, what, what size pantry does he want? Like a walk-in So, well, so I want you guys to tell me what that, when you, when he said pretty big, what, what would you go look for? But if you knew nothing else besides what he just said, so describe pretty big for me. Pretty big would just be something you can walk into. Okay. So what would pretty big mean? If you heard that, like, I want, every, don't, Tell me what you think, think it means. Me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Tell me what. Because we got a walk in pantry, we could just walk into it and that's it. So, something like a small bathroom size, half bath. Okay. Size. Something more than you can just see when you open the door and space for it, a little extra. Okay. I, I picture like a butler's kitchen, but I would probably ask them what they want to store in their big pantry. Okay, which would be a good question. So what? Oh no, I just use the other pantry. I I would just assume something you can walk into. Okay. I assume. Well, I think like maybe he's got a larger family. Maybe that there's, you know, like needs a lot of food. So like, how many people? Okay, but so how big? Yeah. If it's pretty big, what does that mean to you? What? I mean, I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. But I mean, no, I know that. <laughs> but but when he said pretty big. What what do you picture in your mind when he says pretty big? It's like, you know, closet size. Okay. John? I would think everything's visual. So pretty big can be, you can walk, you know, you can see whether it's cupboards or walk in, just a big area. Okay. Have anybody on Zoom have anything different? Than, I think Sean answered, but what, anybody else? Like what, when they say, if he said pretty big, like, get, and you don't have to give me dimensions, but like, tell me, like, what does that mean? Anybody on Zoom? Besides Sean, nobody else paying attention? All right, guess not. Okay, so, um, Trey, when you say pretty big, what is, what is pretty big? Uh, I mean pretty big, like, I have to say like a 10 foot by 10 foot room. Okay, good. Oh. So now notice that, though. Notice how, so part, this is part of what I want you guys to see that, remember, I, mean, I said I'm going to keep tying it back to, we don't listen and we waste their time. Yeah. He would have said, I want a pretty big kitchen, meaning like a 10 foot by 10 foot, like, which is the size of a bedroom. Yeah, that's, what you were saying, that's right? huge. Like the size of a bedroom, walk-in closet. You're going to go out and look for the ones you guys saw, pictured. And you're going to be like, hey, check out this. Like, you're thinking it's great. And he's going to be like, yeah, I think I'd like it a little bigger than that. So the idea of these modifiers is anytime they say something like pretty big, your next follow-up question should be, hey, you mentioned a pretty big pantry. How big is pretty big? So I don't want to take what I think it is. I want to find out from him. Now, sometimes what people will say is they will say, well, I don't know on dimensions. In which case, what I will usually do is say, okay, in relation to the room that we're in, how, how big would it be? And then they'll usually look around at the room and go, oh, you know, half the size or a quarter of the size or twice the size. Like, they'll give you something like that, which, but again, like the size of the pantry does, I want to make sure you guys are clear. It's not like the size of it being 10 by 10 matters. It, it doesn't necessarily matter. What matters though is that he, he's picturing it and he's telling you the decisions he made because pretty soon we're going to get to tool number three, which is why do you want to have that? Which is what basically is how, 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 how did you say it? How does, how is that important or something? Oh, uh, how you well, how will those features benefit you? Yeah, how is it going to benefit you? I'm going to ask that question, but I first have to get to all of this because if you ask it too soon, let's try it and see. 
So how does having that kitchen benefit you? Kitchen? Huh? Uh, just like good for everyone for the internet. Okay, so he did get to a benefit there, but if he would have just said, well, just because like I just, that's what I like. Like that's, you didn't get to a benefit if they're like, well, it'd be perfect. It'd be just what I need. I don't know. I just want it. Like if they, if, if you ever get a response like that, it would be perfect. It would be just what I need. I, I mean, I just want it. What they're telling you is you have not asked enough modifiers. You got to go back and ask more questions. Okay. Now, so now let's go to, he said lots of windows. So again, you have in your mind what lots of windows is. But it doesn't matter what I think it is. I need to know what he is. So I would then follow. Hey, you mentioned lots of windows. How many is lots of windows? Um, I just want to write it there. So see, that's the truth. He doesn't care about the number of windows. It just needs to be bright. You get one see, so but but let's say that I if there was a number that mattered, and I said, so you mentioned lots of windows. How how many is lots of windows? <clears throat> Five or six. Okay, five or six. So then I would do a follow up. What size do they need to be? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> see now, you guys are starting to see already though how this works from the standpoint of it's not the number of windows, it's not the size of the windows, it's he's looking for a, if he wants it to be bright. That's what matters. Okay, so but the problem is we get so caught up in. If, if he wouldn't have said the number doesn't matter, if he would have said like, I don't know, probably five or six. Now, all of a sudden, I'm out trying to find a house that's got five or six windows when it doesn't matter how many windows. What matters is that it's bright. Following? Okay. All right. The other thing he said is updated. Again, you know what that means to you, but I would probably want to follow up with, hey, you mentioned an updated kitchen. What does updated mean to you? Tell me what. What would it be, what would an updated kitchen be like? Still appliances is just something that's simple. Okay. Yeah. Good. So th then I could do other follow-ups of what would the layout be? What kind of appliances are you going to have there? How often do you cook? Who? How many people will be coming over? Lot, you know, all that kind of stuff. Is look. Can you see how quickly I can get past five to seven if I'm doing this right now? So I'm going to ask all of these questions. The idea being, again, getting him to picture it and the decisions that he's made about the kitchen. And then we can go to number three. Okay, so number three. I always think it's funny that people think they're being sneaky, but we can see their feet there. <laughs> <laughs> they're like trying to be all quiet. Like so. <laughs> we should go open it and all. We should open it. Yeah, I should just say that. All right, next. All right, so then tool number three is what I call the tag. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you guys before, but um, I mean, I've mentioned it, but I don't remember how many of you have been in the room when I said this, but growing up, my neighbor across the street owned a grocery store. And at 12 years old, I went over there and knocked on his door and asked him if I could get a job working at his grocery store. And he said, yes you can go clean the meat department. So after the butcher was done for the day, at 12 years old, I'd be in there cleaning the bandsaw, the grinder and all, which you'd never get away with that in today's world. But, but um, I didn't really like doing that. What I wanted to do was like stock the shelves and stuff like as a 12 year old. And I don't know why, which this makes zero sense to me now as I say it. But when I had talked to my neighbor and was like, hey, like how long do I have to clean the meat department? I want to like go stock shelves and stuff. And he was like, oh no, you got to be 14 to stock shelves. So apparently at 12, you're okay to work with things that could cut your hand off, <laughs> but you can't touch like packages that you would put on a shelf for some reason. I don't know. But anyway, finally, when I turned 14, I could start working in the uh, grocery store, which so at 14 years old, I start working in the, the grocery store. And, and back then, the, what we would do is we would take the packages out of the box. And then we had this little price gun that you would set the price and then you'd pull the trigger kind of a thing and a sticker would come out and you'd put it on the package. So we always called that tagging. So for me, this third tool that we're gonna use, think of it as like we're tagging the product. Does that make sense? Okay. So first was the directives, then we go to modifiers, and then the third thing is going to be the tag. 
So now we're going to tag. Another way of saying it is we're going to tag the feature with a benefit. You with me? Okay. So what's going to happen then is once I've asked all these questions, the next thing I'm going to do is say, okay, Trey, I got a really good picture on this. And, and typically when I am going to do the tag, I'm either going to say, this is usually what I say first. What does blank mean to you? Or I'm going to say, why is blank important? Okay. So I'm either going to say, what does having, so typically for me, once we've asked all these questions, I'm going to say, Trey, so what does having that kitchen mean to you? He needs to have somewhere to, to entertain with people from work. Okay, good. So what he just gave us one of the benefit words. One of so we're gonna now I'm gonna now give to you guys the 15 benefit words, but he just gave me the benefit word. So so watch this. So let me see if I can connect some dots for you. He starts, we started this talking about a kitchen. We just landed it on, bless you, the, the benefit is to entertain. So the reason he wants the kitchen is he it's, it is about a place to entertain. It's not about necessarily the kitchen. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay. So yeah, ultimately what we're trying to do then is we're going to try to figure out. So we just landed on the benefit of him getting a kit, this kitchen. What he's looking for in buying a house is he likes to entertain. And, and so what he's looking for is a kitchen that he can entertain. Now, here's the key thing. Once we land on that, the reason what he's looking for in the kitchen is the entertainment. From then on, when, <clears throat> when we go and look at a house, I'm going to be at, instead of walking into the kitchen and saying, does it provide enough light? And does it have enough, um, I don't know, whatever. I'm going to, all I'm going to say is, does this kitchen look like one you could entertain? In? So you don't worry about all the minutia of the kitchen. It's, is this kitchen going to satisfy you being able to entertain? And if the answer is yes, then you're good. If the answer is no, then you got to go back to this of asking more questions to figure out, okay, what, what, why doesn't this kitchen work? What is it about it that, that makes it not work for you? Okay. So that's what we're question. Oh, I just had a thought. He did mention he wanted an open kitchen, yeah. which would tie to the entertaining because he could visualize his friends in the kitchen hanging out and taking yep. them over. Yeah. I yeah. remember he mentioned one of that. That's right. Once you get to the actual benefit, you can then see back to everything he said, why he said what he yeah. said. That's right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now. So actually, I'm going to say one other thing, and then I'll give you the 15 benefit words. But what I would do is now that we've landed on that, then I would have written down up here in this box, entertain. Or entertain, either way, but entertain. Then the next thing I would do is I would have said, okay, Trey, the next thing you mentioned was the garage. It was the next important item. Picture yourself in the garage. Tell me what you see. He's going to now start telling me about the garage. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. Who, what, when, where, how, questions. Minimum of five to seven, but I'm just really trying to, at the end of the day, this number doesn't matter. What matters is, are they, is he picturing it and, and does he recognize and the decisions he's made about it? That's what really matters, okay? But the way that I help him through that is who's going to use it, how, you know, what kinds of things are going to do in the garage, who's going to use the garage, how often to use the garage, what type of tools are you still like, whatever he talks about, I'm asking all these questions about it. Then I'm going to come back to this. So what does having that garage mean to you? And then he would say, whatever. Now, here's the idea. What should happen after you ask them about the what does having it mean to you? They should either say one of the 15 benefit words or they're going to talk around it. So they're going to explain en enough that you'll understand what they mean by it. Okay. So you ready for the 15 benefit words? 
All right, here we go. First one is going to be, and now these aren't in any necessary order. This is just going to be how I tend yeah, what, as they come to me. So hopefully I remember all 15. If not, I got to change. But I think I'll get it. Okay, so comfort. Co think about comfort as being creature comfort. So it is a sense of ease. So if, if comfort is the benefit they're looking for, what they're looking for is a sense of ease. Now, so here's how I like to best describe it. I have a 16-year-old uh, Shih Tzu at my house, and she is a Shih Tzu sometimes, but, <laughs> but she, she will jump up on the couch, and then she's got a blanket on the couch that is like her blanket, and so she'll take her nose, and she'll like push like on the blanket, and then she'll get on it, and she'll kind of step on it, and then she'll sit or lay down, and then she'll stand up, and she'll turn around, and then she'll lay down and just kind of go... <sighs> Like that's comfort. Comfort is the, okay? So if they're talking about the, that feature, whatever it is, as like, it's a place that I go to unwind and that I can kind of let the day go, blah, blah, blah. That's comfort. What they're looking for in that feature is someplace that they can, okay? That's comfort, okay? Next, convenience. Convenience is about ease of use. So convenience is about ease of use. So a lot of times location, the location that somebody wants, they want that location because it's convenient. So for me, one of the benefits that, that and I don't know that it still is for me, but when I bought the home that I'm in, that was one of the benefits that I was looking for was convenience. Now here's the idea behind it, twofold. One is being a realtor, I was like, I want our house to be in an area that's centrally located in the valley that is close to either I-15 or 215 so that if I have to go show a house, I can be like anywhere in the valley with, like for me, that was kind of the idea. So one of the key things I was looking for was convenience, okay? So that's convenience is ease of use, okay? Next, safety. Safety is about physical safety, okay? Next one is security. And you may want to put in parentheses after security, peace of mind. So when, when we talk about security as a benefit, we're talking about peace of mind. So a lot of times, actually, what would happen is, is it, we'll use Michelle. So let's say that she was like, I want a house with a fenced in backyard because I have a six-year-old that I don't want him running out in the road. Well, She's worried about his physical safety, but what does having a fenced yard and not having to worry about Roman running out in the street do for her? Peace of, Peace of mind, which is really security, okay? So when, when somebody's talking about like, I wanna feel a certain way, like feel safe or whatever, it's about them having security, okay? All right, next, let's do value. Value is about making money. So if, the, if they're talking about, hey, I want to buy this house and in a year I want to have, um, you know, some equity in it or whatever, they're talking about value. Value is about making money. Economy is about saving money. So if they're worried about high efficient furnace, triple pane windows, thick insulation, stuff like that, what they're worried about is economy. It's, they're worried about saving money, okay? All right, next, let's go privacy. Privacy is about, you know, being, having some, some seclusion, whatever, being able to get away, that kind of stuff, okay? Next, entertainment. Entertain or entertainment, entertaining, uh, either way you want to say it, but entertainment would be the next one is they want to be able to entertain. Next. This one is another one of my benefits that I was looking for in a home, and that's recreation. Now, I think I mentioned this to you guys, so I apologize for saying it again, but I still feel like I need to, so I'm going to. When I bought the house that I'm in, I, if, if we had sat down and you were my agent, I would have said to you, I want a one acre lot. Yet I bought a home on a quarter acre of a lot. Now, the, you would have asked, well, so, 
who's going to use the, the yard and what are you going to do? And da, 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 da. Well, the home that I'm in, I'm on a quarter acre, but right outside of my backyard. So I'm part of a PUD right outside of my backyard is the neighborhood park, which is probably, I don't know, four acres maybe of land. I don't know if it's quite that much, but it's pretty big, which is actually better than me having one acre. Because what else goes along with one acre? A lot of work. Yeah, yeah, a lot of work that I don't want to have to do. Like I wanted the one acre for, for recreation is what I wanted it for. I'm big into baseball. I love coaching baseball. And, and um, I have three boys. Like, so for me, it was like, I want room that we can actually go out and play catch, and, which truthfully on one acre really wouldn't have quite worked. So it was about the recreation for me that I wanted one acre. But notice I'm on a quarter acre, but right outside of my backyard is the neighborhood park. So, so that's the, again, the idea of, I would have shown up telling you this is the feature, yet here's the thing. You would have gone out and shown me one acre properties. And every time I went out there, I would have looked at them from the standpoint of this is gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna take up my whole Saturday. Yeah. My whole Saturday is gonna be spent working in the yard. So therefore I would have been like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice, but it's not quite working. Versus once you figure this out by going through all this process, you would have been able to figure out from me. So it's not really the one acre. You just want enough room. So like you, part of what you can ask during these modifiers would have been, well, what would your feelings be or what would your attitude be? How would you feel about if you were in a, if your property was not one acre, but there was a park right next door. And then the, if they go, oh, well, yeah, that would totally work. And in fact, they might go, that's an even better idea. So that's kind of how using all of this helps us figure out. And it shortens the process because again, if you would have kept showing me one acre properties, I would have never bought it. Like I would have kept looking and saying, yes, we still want the acreage. But every time I would have looked at it as look how much work this is going to be. Okay. All right. So recreation. Next. Love. So love would be a lot of times where this will show up is on like a mom saying, I, you know, I want to be, I want to have a space that the kids can come home from school and they sit down and start doing their homework. And I'm there to, you know, connect with them again on the day, blah, blah, blah. That's all going to be stuff that's related to what they're looking for is a place to show their friends or their family, how much they love them. Okay. All right. Next is self actualization what is self-actualization okay Yoga? could be something sorry okay <laughs> okay could be what other thoughts you could actually do yourself okay good that's how i like to kind of think of of, of this this one comes up pretty rare it pretty like I think I've only had one time with a client that self actualization actually came up. But think of it as is a lot of times it's it's they can be themselves or this is what I was created for. I'm able to do like what what I feel like I'm fulfilling my life's purpose. Whatever that's a lot of times is the self actualization. Another time that I would say that I've seen that is like somebody that's like I want a woodworking place and you and as you ask them questions about woodworking that they're like. Well, I don't ever do anything with it. Like a lot of times after I've created something out of wood, I just kind of put it on a shelf and I never do anything with it. It's just like, I feel like I'm at one with the universe when I'm doing that. That would be self-actualization, okay? So like I said, it doesn't come up very often, but that is one that does come up from time to time. Next, health. So health will come up as like, I need a one level property home because I have bad knees or I need to have a swimming pool so I can swim laps because I had a heart attack. I mean, anything like that is going to be about health. Or sometimes people here in the valley, like I want to be up on Suncrest because I want to get out of the smog in the winter or whatever. Like that would be potentially health related. Okay. All right. Is anybody numbering? What number? Was I think that, that was 12. That was 12? Okay. Next. Sex is the next one that um, we'll leave it at that since we have a six year old there. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the only thing I'll say on that is you don't have to actually say the word. 
you could say romance or some intimate time, but just recognize that that I've only had it. This one has only come up a couple times. This has come up more than this, but um, just recognize like they're they're talking about the hot tub or the you know whatever. Like it's possible now. Like I say, you don't have to say the word if you don't want to to the client if you feel uncomfortable, but instead say, so it sounds like where you're looking for is a place you can have some romance or something. And they'll say, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. But no, that's what they're talking about. Okay. Could, kind of the as well. could be, could be, yep. Could be. All right. So that was 13. Yeah. Right? Two more. All right. Let's see. I got to look at it to see what I'm, oh. Next. Is aesthetics, the aesthetics of it. So what is it, how, how it looks, okay? So when this, that one doesn't come up a lot either, but um, when it does come up, here's how it's gonna look, is they'll start talking about the detail of the house. So like the, the best example that I can give to you is I had a, a client that I sat down and was taken through this process and as I started asking the questions, they, they said, I want one of those, uh, I want an older home because like, I want to have one that on the door has those doorknobs that like have etching on the doorknobs. Like when they start talking about etching on a doorknob, they're probably looking, <laughs> it's about the aesthetic. Or if they start talking about the certain type of brick and the way that it's got to look on, on the house, probably what the benefit they're referring to is going to be the aesthetics of it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Last one. Yeah. yeah. What did you say? Nothing. Ever. All right. What am I forget? Comfort. Like work office space. No. No. I'm gonna have to look on my sheet. What am I forget? I feel like it's family. Oh, yeah. duh. No. <laughs> I usually put this one earlier because it comes up more often, but I skipped it. Prestige slash esteem. So either prestige or esteem. So here's the difference. I think about prestige and esteem of being two sides of the same coin, like one's heads and one's tails. Prestige is about how other people see me. Esteem is how I see myself. So if they're talking about this house and they're like, yeah, when I, I want when my friends come over, I want to be like, wow, you live here. That's prestige. If they're talking about like, hey, after a hard day at work, when I pull up to my house, I want to be like, yeah, that's why I work so hard so I can have this. That would be a bit about the esteem. So prestige and esteem, two sides of the same coin. But that could be one of the ones. And again, this one, again, depending on the person, sometimes when you say, well, so what does having that mean to you? They may not say prestige or esteem. They may be like, well, just, you know, I mean, like, I want to look good. So you can then kind of go, okay, so. What we're looking for then is a house that that's going to make you feel good or or that your friends will be impressed with when they come over yeah yeah that's what i want okay now so that 15 right yeah mm -hmm. okay all right so now let me come back to this so this whole entire process just to remind you again is about creating what crystallization okay good i've only got half of you though it's about what crystallization. all right good now here's the thing you'll notice we got a whole bunch of good information out of this process but it's not about the information it is about them crystallizing like all of this stuff is great and useful and helpful but at the end of the day what matters is that did they crystallize because if they crystallize they're now empowered to buy and if they didn't they're not going to buy so your job is to get them to crystallize. Now, along the way, we're going to get a lot of good and helpful information. But, but again, when you go show properties to them, don't talk about the feature anymore. Now all I talk about is the benefit. Okay? So if, I'm, if it was prestige and, and it, the house, then when we pull up, I would be like, hey, do you think, is this a house that you would feel like would impress your friends when they come over? Like that's, where, that's how I'm going to talk about the house, not the features of it. Does that make sense? Now, it hasn't come up again, but I'll say it again anyway. Just a reminder, features have a price tag, benefits do not. You can find the feature in any 
or excuse me, you can find the benefit in any price range. So there's not a, so you don't have to worry of like, what if they describe a house they can't afford? So back to, again, for me, before I bought the home I'm in, if you would have sat down with me, what, what I said was, I want one acre, I want a two story, and I want a swimming pool in the basement. Well, I don't have a swimming pool in the basement. What I, the other piece of this in terms of convenience that I was looking for was at the time I, I was doing a lot of swimming. And so I would jump in my car and I would drive three miles to get to Gold's Gym. I would swim. Then I would jump in the car and drive back. Well, in the winter, it's freezing cold. I go out, I get in my car, I drive to the gym, I swim, I get done swimming, my hair's wet, I walk back outside, I'm freezing cold for the three mile drive. So when I was like, ideal home for me would have a swimming pool in the basement where I can, could, can, I didn't, wouldn't have said it as the convenience, but it was, it wasn't about having a swimming pool in the basement. It was, I want convenience for exercise. So now right outside of my backyard in my house now is the community pool. Guess how many times I've gone over and swam in that pool? Zero. Uh, probably five or so. But, <laughs> but it was just about the convenience. See, convenience is what I was looking for, not the pool in the basement. So again, that's what I'm saying by like, the house that I have is not one that would have a swimming pool in the basement. But I have the convenience. I, I was looking for convenience. That's what I wanted not the feature. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm, might feel like I'm beating this up, but I'm intentionally doing that. Because if you get too caught up in this, you'll feel like, well, I don't want to ask these people all these questions because then they won't be able to afford the house. It's not about the house. It's about the, the benefit. And you can find the benefit in any price range. If somebody who said they wanted the convenience of a swimming pool and they said they wanted it in the basement, but they can only afford a mobile home, you can still get convenience of that. Either, either the mobile home park has a swimming pool or the community pool is right across the street. Like that's how you meet the benefit. It's about the benefit, not the feature. They're buying the benefit. And again, that's where we get into the, this idea of people saying buyers are liars. They're not liars. They're just looking for the benefit. Let me say it different. They found the benefit in a different feature. We said that they're a liar because they bought something different than they said they wanted. But they bought the feature they wanted. They just bought it, or excuse me, they bought the benefit they wanted. They just bought it in a different feature. And they're looking for the benefit, not the feature. That's why, that's why they'll go do that. And we think they're lying. But the truth is, they just found the benefit in a different feature. Okay? All right. So, let next piece of this. So let me pass out to you guys this. In fact, I'm just going to do it this way. Take one down and pass it around. Okay, so on this, this one is one I would say, and I've got probably a few extra ones if somebody else wants one, or more than one. But use, use this as um, kind of as a master template. And then, um, and you can see on this one, it's got the benefits written down the, the one side there. And I've got the uh, permission script at the top. So let me give you, I'm going to give you kind of more of a blueprint now. Did everybody get this written down? The, yeah. The benefits so I can erase them. Mm -hmm. okay. So let me give you kind of a blueprint of what this whole thing looks like, top to bottom. Okay. So if, if I were doing this and I had the client come in and meet with me, this is what it would look like. So I'm just giving you a blueprint. So I'm gonna do, first thing is I'm gonna do, actually I'm writing permission, but I'm gonna, there's one thing I would do before that actually. I'm gonna put up at the top here, bio, okay? First thing that I'm gonna do is the bio. Here's what the bio looks like. Thanks for coming in. And Derek, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about me. And so I'm gonna then talk about me for like one to two minutes. If, if you, Talk about you for less than a minute. You haven't said enough. If you talk about you for more than two minutes, you're saying way too much. So the idea of it should not be real estate either. It's, hey, before we get going, let me just tell you a little bit about me. And then I'm going to go in from the standpoint, I'm married. I got three boys. I enjoy um, fishing and spending time in the outdoor. Like I'm talking about just me. Okay. 
Then once I've done that, I'm going to say, so Derek, that's a little bit about me. Tell me a little bit about you. Now, the reason I go first is if I say to him, let me tell you a little bit about me. And then I tell him like, I'm married. I got three kids. I, this is what I like to do for fun and blah, blah, blah. When I say, tell me a little bit about you, what's he going to tell me back? He's going to mirror it back. So that's the reason you go first. Sometimes people will be like, I feel like you should ask them first. Well, the reason I don't ask them first is I'm setting up for them. This is the kind of stuff I want to hear from you. So I'm just saying, here's a little bit about me. Talk for one to two minutes. Now tell me a little bit about you. He's going to tell me a little bit about him, which is going to be the same type of information. Like if I said, here's where I went to college, he's going to tell me about college. So like whatever it is, but just think of it as you want to give kind of bullet points so that they'll give you back some bullet points that you could then use later on. So this is twofold. One is it's going to give me things that he and I could talk about as we go out to look at properties or whatever. I'm going to know some things we either have in common or the stuff that maybe I want to ask him more questions about is one reason. The other reason is this bio is a setup for permission. So part of why we're being telling them some of the information about us that's just personal is because then I'm going to go to permission. Now, so I gave you guys or on that has the permission script. In order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, I need to ask you some questions. Some of them may feel personal, maybe things you haven't considered. Is that going to be okay? They're going to say yes. Now, here's the thing. We've already been personal. That's why we start with the Bible. Good question. Because like I know that you don't want to regard real like real estate in the in like that the bio. Mm -hmm. But say like if I mentioned like hey, you know, I'm from a family of real estate agents. Is that something where I like, because it's real estate related, I should avoid or let those tell? No, I think that would be okay. And here's the thing, especially, so thank you for asking, because especially if I'm doing this with a seller, I do want to talk about real estate, add the real estate piece to it. With a seller, you for sure want to kind of, hey, this is how long I've been doing it and blah, 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 but, but not a lot. It mostly still wants to be personal. But so yes, as where that is more personal kind of a thing, yes, you could do that. So, okay, so permission. In order for us to determine whether or not I can help you, and he asked you some questions. So I'm setting that up there so that we can now, as we get into it, start talking about some of this personal stuff. It's not too surprising. Okay, once we've done permission, then I'm going to go into these directives. So, but I'm going to write it up here as fill the grid. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is describe for me your ideal home and fill the grid. What else? Keep going. Tell me more. What else? Keep going. Tell me more. When do I stop asking? What else? Keep going. Tell me more. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. When they say that's about it, I don't know what else to say. Okay. Then after that, I'm going to do the rank. So I'm going to, hey, of everything we've talked about, what are the two or three that are most important? Then I'm going to do the modifiers. And that's where we're going to do minimum five to seven, Michelle. We were right on. So I'm going to do minimum five to seven modifiers. Then I'm going to do the tag. Now, and I, I said this, but I want to make sure that you guys understand, because sometimes people get confused on this. Of the two or three that are most important, I'm going to do the modifiers on number one first. And I'm going to tag. I'm going to get to a benefit on number one. Then I'll go back to number two, do the modifiers, and then tag to get to a benefit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Once I, so so this modifiers and tag. I'm once I rank, I'm going to have two or three that are most important. I'll do modifiers and tag on one, modifiers and tag on two, modifiers and tag on three, to where I've landed on the the three key needs. Okay. Once I've done that, once I've landed. In fact, I'm going to just say three, two to three, key needs, or I'll put in parentheses benefits. Yeah. Once I've landed on those two to three benefits or key needs, then I'm gonna do, the next thing is I'm gonna do the money. Now we haven't talked about this one yet. So here's what I would do next. So, that, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna say, Trey, I got a good, great, idea what you're looking for in a home we're you know in the kitchen we're looking for it or we're looking for a place that you can entertain and then a place that you are going to feel uh the peace of mind about your car's not getting ripped off because you're in the garage so um how do you plan to pay for this 
So that's the money piece. How do you plan to pay for this? Now, there's only going to be one of two answers. What are they? Loan or cash. That's right. So how do you plan to pay for it? Okay. So I'm just going to, so that's the money piece. So how do you plan to pay for it? Now, in the event he says he's paying cash, what do I want? Proof of funds. First, yeah. Proof. So yes, if it's cash, great. How much do you want to spend? Great. I'm going to need either a letter from your bank or a copy of a bank statement that says you have funds in excess of whatever it is you're wanting to spend. If he's getting a loan, great. Then the follow-up question is, who have you talked to? Zero. Oh, good, perfect. I was <laughs> gonna recommend them if you didn't. So yeah, if, if, if he didn't have somebody, then I'm gonna say, great, I'm gonna have my lender give you a call. We're gonna get you the pre-approval letter. Now, once we've done that, then we'll know what his buying power is. So notice, I haven't asked anything about buying power until we get down to here. Because it, again, it doesn't really matter because you can find those benefits in any price range. Okay. All right. So after I've done money, then I'm going to do the next script that I'm going to give you, which is, uh, I'm going to reword it here. It's on the thing. It says, let me tell you how I work, but I'm just going to put it here. It's how I work. Okay. So here's what that's going to look like. So Trace, you're going to get a loan from Inspira. Do you already have a pre-approval letter? Yeah. You do? Perfect. Can I, will you get me a copy of that tonight? Sure. Perfect. And how much did they approve you for? Two million dollars. Perfect. Yeah. No, it, notice I got real excited. Hey, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> All right. So now, now I'm going to go into the how I work. And here's what that looks like. So Trey, let me tell you how I work. I'm going to go out and look at every home on the market in your price range, but I'm only going to show you the ones that actually meet your needs. So in my experience, I have to look at 10 houses to find one that would work for you. So what that means is if we go look at three or four homes, I will have previewed 30 to 40. I'm willing to commit the time to do that, provided that during the time we're working together, you'll commit to working exclusively with me. Okay. Okay, so now notice what I just did on this how I work is I just got him to commit to sign the buyer broker. Can you say it again? Yep, I'm actually going to give it to you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So in just a minute, I'll give it to you. So, but I'll say it again too, still. So, hey, Trade, that's great. Let me tell you how I work. I'm going to go out and look at every home in the market in your price range, but I'm only going to show you the ones that meet your needs. Now, so here's the idea of that I'm going to go out and look at every home in the market. And essentially what I'm saying is, so you don't have to, you don't have to go look at every house. I'm going to go do that, but I'm only going to show you the ones that meet your needs. So part of what I'm saying is I'm going to go see everything that's out there, but we're only going to look at a few houses is, is kind of what I'm saying too. Okay. In a subtle way. So I'm going to go out and look at every home in the market in your price range, but we're, I'm only going to show you the ones that actually meet your needs. These. So in my experience, I have to look at 10 to find one. Now, so for you guys, you might want to say it as in our experience, because if maybe you haven't had it yet, so you'd say in our experience, I have to look at 10 to find one. So if we're going to look at three or four, which so again, I'm setting up to kind of set the stage for him to know, like we're only going to go out and look at three or four houses. Okay. So if we're going to go look at three or four, I will have previewed 30 to 40. Now, if I'm willing to commit the time do, to do that, provided that during the time we're working together, you'll commit to working exclusively with me. Okay, great. I've got an agreement that states that in writing. Bam, and then I just have him sign. Okay, now, once we've done that, the last thing is after setting the appointment. The last script I'm gonna use with him, which I'll give to you, and here's the thing. Think of it this way. The way that I'm going to give you these, in fact, I'll just do it. Let me just pass them around. These scripts, um, um, the permission script, you want to do word for word. The let me tell you how I work script. Just make sure you get the concept. And then same thing with after setting the appointment. 
is it's about so i'm going to just make sure you guys understand the concept that we're talking about on this okay so here's what the concept is after i've set the appointment so now we've done money we've i've gotten them to sign the buyer broker now i'm going to talk to them about what's going to happen when we go see so the next step would be setting the appointment to go look at some houses so then what i'm going to say is this is i'm going to say okay trey so on saturday when we go out to look at houses i want to make sure that you and i just have an understanding with of each other so i don't want you to feel pressured when we go out and look at houses but what i do want you to do is make a decision so when we go out and look at houses, I'm going to ask you after every single house, do you want to write an offer on this house? A no is just as important to me as a yes. So don't feel pressure. Okay. I just want to make sure that now notice what I'm going to do here. I just want to make sure I'm not wasting your time out looking at properties that don't work for you. So after every property we look at, I'm going to ask you, do you want to write an offer on this home? And it, remember, a no is just as important to me as a yes. So I'm not looking for a yes per se. Okay. So when we go out on Saturday, make sure you bring your checkbook because we're going to go find you a house. Good. All right. Now, so here's the concept of this after setting the appointment. Most agents go out and show a property and then afterwards they go, so what do you think? And the person goes, eh, I mean, it's okay. All right, well, let's go look at the next one. And then you come on. So what do you think? I mean, I, I like it better than the other one, but I don't know. Like, what I want to do with this is I'm going to tell them, Trey, after every house we look at, I'm going to ask you if you want to write an offer. But I don't feel pressure because a no is just as important to me as a yes. So I'm not asking it to pressure you. I just want to make sure I'm not wasting your time. See, now we go out and look at a house. How easy is it when we walk out of the house to say, Trey, do you want to write an offer? on?" And, and actually, let me even back up. Before we walk into the first house, I usually will say, now, Trey, remember, after we go look at the house, I'm going to ask you if you want to write an offer and a no is just as important as a yes. I'm not pressuring you, okay? We go walk it through the house. Come out. Well, you want to write an offer on it? Let's do it. See, because that's just it. What if they go, yeah? Then I'm going to go, okay, and I'll leave and go write the offer. So it, what if he says no? Then I go, okay, great. Let's go look at the next one. So we go to the next one. Do you want to write an offer on this one? No. no. Okay, we go to the third one. Do you want to write an offer on this one? No. Okay, so I only have three houses. He doesn't want to write an offer on any of them. What you do then is you come back and you go, okay, I here's how I handle it. I always start by apologizing. I'm, I'm sorry, Trey. Like, I, I really hoped to be, like, I totally take it as like, I was planning on finding a property for you to write an offer on today. And I apologize that that didn't happen. So here's what I need to know, though, is what did I miss? What, what, so I, I take it on as it's my fault that you're not writing an offer right now. And I do it from the standpoint of what did I miss? But what I'm going to do is jump right back into this because I'm going to say, what did these property, what did I miss from what we talked about? What did the property have or not have that it needed? And then I'm just going to probe for more information to figure out, okay, here's like maybe he, maybe we go into the kitchen and he goes, it's the, all three of those kitchens you show me, there just wasn't quite enough light. Oh, okay. Well, then now I know that it, I need to go find kitchens that have more light or whatever. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to find out like what didn't work because here's what's happened. When they've described this house, you should be able to picture it in your mind as well, at least for the benefits that I've erased, the benefits. But if, and if I get to the property and the feature is not providing the benefit for them, then I misunderstood what the feature has to be to get to the benefit. So then I just got to ask more questions. Now, let's say we go do it again. So I get that and I go, great, I'm going to go find more properties to show you. And then we'll, we'll go out again on Tuesday. So I go Tuesday, we go out, look at properties. Do you want to write an offer? No. Do you want to write an offer? No. Do you want to write an offer? No. Okay. I, hey, I apologize again. Like, it's pretty rare that I like, and I'll say this too, because I want them to feel a little, even though I'm taking responsibility and I, Hey, I'm, I, you know, I apologize. It's pretty rare that I don't get somebody to that's ready to write an offer after two showings or two days of showings. Like to some extent, I'm kind of a little bit having them even be like, maybe I'm the problem. 
but so I I'm want can I kind of want them to be like so hey I apologize and I don't I always say it is I don't want to waste your time looking at properties that don't work that you wouldn't want to write an offer on so help me understand what I missed now if you've done that three times and they still aren't buying they're maybe telling you they're not really a buyer so it's one of two things either one they haven't crystallized they didn't crystallize yet or they're not a real buyer. So let me tell you a quick story on that, because here's the issue with that. Every time you go out and you're working with a client, there's an opportunity cost. You are giving up the opportunity to have done something with someone else. So I had a guy that, that this story relates to, that he would go out and show this guy properties, but he would never buy, never buy, never buy. And I finally said to the agent, like, it's costing you money to go show this guy houses. Don't go show him houses. Now, the piece that I left out is the guy was wanting to buy up in Park City and was over a million dollars that he was wanting to buy. And this agent was like, well, yeah, but this is a million dollar buyer. Like that's a $30,000 commission. Like I don't want to miss out on, on that. And I was like, I understand, but what's the opportunity cost? I said to him, what are you missing out on because you're showing him properties? And he just couldn't get it. He, and, and I finally just said, like, I don't want to hear about this buyer anymore. So like, don't, like, don't come talk to me about this buyer because in my mind, he's not a buyer. You're wasting your time. A few months go by, the guy comes into my office and goes, I have to tell you a story. And I go, okay. And he goes, remember so-and-so? And I said, yeah, we're not talking about him. Remember? I don't want to hear about him. And he goes, no, no, no. You're going to want to hear this. I said, okay. And he, so the company that I was with, we had an office on Main Street in Park City at the time. And this guy would, and in Park City on Main Street, like during the winter, like it is not uncommon of people in town to ski that just decide they want to buy something. So he's sitting there in the office on Main Street in Park City, and um, he was on what we called floor time. Now, a lot of places don't have floor time anymore, where basically just if somebody walks in the office or calls in, and with the internet, like you don't have many people walk in or call in much anymore. But he was on floor time up there because in Park City, it's not uncommon for people to be in town to ski. They're on Main Street. They just walk in and be like, hey, we want to buy, we saw this property. We want to buy a house here. We like the snow or whatever. So um, he's on floor time. Gets a call from this guy. Hey, I want to go see this house in Jeremy Ranch. So he goes, all right, I'll be right over. Hangs up. He goes and finds another agent in the office, says, Joe. Hey, I got to go show a property. I'm on floor time. Do you want to take it? John sure. says, yeah, sure. So he jumps in the car. He drives off to Park City. He's showing this guy a house. In the meantime, Joan's sitting there in the office. Somebody walks in and goes, hey, we were just skiing and we saw this um, condo right off of such and such lift or whatever. And uh, we want to buy it. Will you write the offer for us? And she goes, yeah, sure. Pulls it up. $1.2 million property writes the offer, gets it accepted. He comes back. She goes, you're never going to believe what happened. You <laughs> left. And right after you left, these people walked in and wanted to buy this property. I wrote the offer for him. He, he said, I get what you meant now by opportunity cost. Is So for me, that's the idea of all of this <clears throat> is when you're working with a buyer, if you'll take them through this process and you say to them, look, I pride myself on being able to go find properties based on this information. Like if they're not writing offers, they either haven't crystallized or they're not a real buyer like this guy. He was not a real buyer. One other quick story on a, on a not real buyer. Part of where I learned this, that I'm sharing with you all of this, most of the stuff I teach you guys in is because I screwed it up and I learned the lesson and, and have now created it to help, help you not have to experience it. So I had a guy that, that before I had learned all of this, he was lived in Orem, but he worked at L3 that's out by the airport. And he, I don't remember how I got in contact with him, but he, he sat down with me and I had taken him through the old way of, hey, what are you looking for in a home? And he told me, and he told me I'm getting divorced. I work at L3, but I live in Orem. And like, if I'm gonna be divorced and not be with my kids anyway, I might as well live close to work and not have to worry about um, the commute every day. Okay. 
so we go look at properties, look at properties. And he just kept saying, I, I just want to find a really good deal. I want to find a really good deal. Kept looking at properties, kept looking at properties. He wouldn't buy, wouldn't buy. Finally, I came across one that I was like, this is a killer deal. This house is a deal. So I called him up, found the deal. He says, um, okay, let's go look at it. We go look at it. And if I'm, if I remember right, I, I may be a little vague on these numbers, but it was about this. The property was listed at 150, 150 something thousand, worth 175. So I tell him, like, we found the deal. And we go look at it. And he, and he says, you think this is really, I'm like, this is a good deal. Like, you need to jump on it quick before somebody else figures it out, because uh, this house is probably worth 175. He goes, well, let's write the offer for 157. And I was like, okay. So I wrote the offer. I, I think it was listed at 159. We wrote it at 157. But I told him, like, you should at least pay full price. But he goes, let's just write at 157. So, okay, we'll write it at 157, submit the offer, get a call from the agent. Hey, we, we got another offer in. So you're now in a multiple offer situation. So I go back to him and I'm like, we're now in a multiple offer. Like we could have gotten this. If you, I didn't say that, but I said, so what do you want to do? And he said, well, how much do you think the house is worth? And I said, it, it would appraise for 175, no problem. And he goes, yeah, let's just leave my offer where it's at. And I said, you're not going to get the property that we're in a multiple offer. I promise you the person's going to pay over list price or at least list price. Yeah, let's see what happens. That for me was when ding, ding, ding. Here's what I realized. Remember of the benefit words? Love. What I figured out with this guy was I was like, he's not going to buy it. So here's what I did. I went to the newest agent in the office and I went, hey, Trey, I got a buyer if you're interested. And the, this agent goes, okay. And I said, just, just pay me a 25% referral fee if you buy something. Okay. Okay. So I call up the guy. I go, hey, um, I'm not going to be able to help you. Like, I, I, I just, I got a ton of stuff going on right now. So I've got another agent in the office that's going to take over. Okay. Passed it off. And then I forgot all about it after that. I never got paid. Five years later, no lie. Five years later, the guy calls me up and he goes, hey, I don't know if you remember me. He told me his name and I was like, oh yeah, I remember. I didn't say that, but I was like, oh yeah, I remember. And he goes, you had set up on the MLS so that if a property came up that matched my criteria, it would send me an email. And I said, yeah. And he said, I've got an agent that's helping me right now. And um, he doesn't know how to do that. If I have him call you, can you help him? And I go, yeah, that's fine. I'll do that. And I said, but let me ask you, did you ever end up buying a house? No, not yet. <laughs> five years later now so here's what i figured out though what i realized because i talked to him a little bit more at that point but here's what i realized knowing what i know now he hated the the he he wanted the convenience of being close to work but he had in conflict that with that the love of his kids now here's what i found out later on he lived the house that he had lived in before he was divorced, the next door neighbor said, you can rent my house once he got divorced. So he got divorced, but was renting the house right next door. So stop and think about that for a minute. For the kids, how easy is it to, like they could just walk out one door into the next and like they were at either mom or dad's. And what I realized was as much as he wanted the convenience, he was not willing to give up the that like, if I move here, my kids can't just walk across the street anymore. So once I realized that is when I went and passed him off to another agent. Cause I was like, well, if they do happen to buy, at least I'll get paid something off. So blessing in that story too, for the new agent, be careful when somebody comes and says you want a buyer, but, but that's what was going on is he wasn't willing to give that up as much as he hated the commute. He hated worse to give that up. So when he was said, I got to find a good deal. It was like, it's got to be a good enough deal to give up being right next door to my kids. Yeah. And what I learned was there's really nothing that's going to do that. So anyway, all right. Questions, comments, thoughts. How did I do Roman? Thumbs up. You'll come back to another class. <laughs> <laughs> I prompted him a little too much. All right.
but I did good on this one at least. No, oh, I went from thumbs up to thumbs down. All right, dang. Now I feel bad. I'm just kidding. Okay, any thoughts or comments? Set them up on a hot sheet for that neighborhood specifically. Yeah. Well, yeah, except for the problem is he didn't want to buy a house there. So yeah. my guess was five years later, the kids were old enough that they didn't want to go over to his house anymore. Like yeah. they're probably teenagers. And at that point, I'll bet I'll bet he did buy after that. But I, I was like, I'm not doing it. So. so it's appropriate to call up to talk to that person and say, you know what, I'm just too busy. There's another agent. I mean, well, I did. I didn't because. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to give up the chance of a commission. So, like, I might as well pass it off to somebody else. Get a 25. Get a 25% referral fee. Look, I know he never bought. I never got paid. But then five years later, he told me he still hadn't bought. So, and I guarantee you, he was probably looking most of that time. So, all right. Well, thanks for being here. So, now for next week is Elevate. So, um, we're not going to be in conflict with that. So, like, my, I, would recommend you go to that. So as a result, no class next week. In, so on Tuesday, Thursday next week is Elevate. So nothing here. I'll actually be in California. I'll be with your grandma. Nice. I mean, not really, but <laughs> his grandma is an agent in our offices in California. But so I'm going to be down at our California offices too. So, so no classes next week, but then I'll email you the following Monday about, well, let me just, I'll tell you what the class is next week. Is a, I was going to say, usually I do it as right after this is listing presentation. So, yep. There it is. So we'll get into the, how do you do this with a seller on uh, that next Tuesday? I've got notes for that class, but I might as well do it again, right? Are you getting a lot of listings? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So cool. So, well, thanks for being here. And remind me where you're, Barbados? No, where are you? Bahamas, that's right. Are you going to Nassau? Busy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Atlantis. Oh, sweet. Well, have fun. Okay. Thanks for being here, guys. And on Zoom, Thank make you sure you guys put your name in the chat box if you didn't. Question. I have an answer.